I replaced these 12 Power BI measures with one single measure using ChatGPT. Not only that, this new one measure made the functionality of the dashboard better than I ever expected. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing, to create faster, more dynamic measures in Power BI using the power of AI. If that sounds good, let's get rolling. So I started with a Power BI model that looks like so many of our Power BI models. If I come up here to my measure table, I've got actuals month to date, actuals quarter to date. I'm repeating it for our budget, month to date, quarter to date, week to date. And the same for prior year, month to date, quarter to date, week to date. All in, it's 12 separate individual measures. And those 12 measures have to be individually pulled into charts. But what if we didn't have to do any of that work? What if we could write DAX code so dynamic that it would do all of this work automatically. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how to make DAX code be that dynamic, but ChatGPT does. So let's pop over to a ChatGPT window and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one and I am more than happy to help. So we've got ChatGPT up. Now note, I am using a pro version of ChatGPT. You don't need that. I just use this all the time, so I have pro. What I'm gonna show you, the prompt I'm gonna give you and we'll also put down in the description, this prompt will work on the free version, it will work on Claude, it will work on Copilot. Whatever you have access to, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paste in our prompt. Act as a Power BI expert. I need your help enhancing and simplifying my dashboard. I have a table of data called GL data with columns, data, category, attribute, value, and month name. I'd like the user to be able to dynamically select metrics and periods. And the 12 measures I want to replace are as follows. Give me a step-by-step -step build out with all the DAX I need. So I've already showed you what we're working with for the measures. These are the measures we want to replace. Let me just quickly show you the data set we want to work with. So this data set is going to be GL data. You see, we've got a column, we have our dates here, our category. So this is revenue for coffee sales, lots of different categories in here. We have our food sales, ingredients, labor. We've got attribute. This is our forecasted amount and our actual amount, the value, and then the month names. So a pretty common GL table, just like you would normally be working with. So how can we make this dynamic? Pretty common GL table, and we've given these columns right to ChatGPT so they know what we're working with and can write custom code. So with our prompt in, let's come back to ChatGPT. Let's go ahead and send it away and watch it work its magic. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I send a new copy every week with tips, tricks, and hacks just like this. Plus, when you sign up, you'll get a copy of my free guide to 15 five-minute finance automations. You don't want to miss it. So again, click the link down in the description to get started. All right, so ChatGPT is coming back. So we can get rid of those 12 measures and replace them with one dynamic measure. We need a proper date table, always a best practice in Power BI. We need two disconnected slicer tables, one for metric and one for period. And then it's calling it one choose your own adventure measure that switches. That's where this is gonna be dynamic for the user. And then it's giving us a step-by-step -step guide. So here's our assumptions. So this is saying I'm making these assumptions about things from what you've told me. We need to build a date table. So this will be creating a date table in Power BI, and this is gonna turn on all of the time intelligence functions in Power BI. You don't really need to know what time intelligence means specifically, just know that by following this process that AI is gonna show us, we're gonna enable Power BI to work with functions like month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and things like that. So we're gonna go through and do that. We need to then create these disconnected slicer tables and note as we're going, it's giving us all of the code ready to copy and paste. So there's all of those tables. Then we have the base measures, and then we've got the dynamic measures. So we're gonna go ahead and use those. And finally, we'll put in our slicers and our visuals. So that's what we're gonna work with, and ChatGPT has given us every step of what we need to do. So let's start at the top with our date table. All right, I'm gonna slide ChatGPT to another window so we can focus on the Power BI. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this page just to keep the formatting. So this will be dynamic test. And then let's go ahead and get rid of these visuals. We're just gonna use this matrix visual right here, but we will delete out what we don't need at the moment. All right, so there's our matrix visual. And then we're gonna delete out month. We'll leave store, but we're not gonna need month because we're rebuilding this. So let's start with our date function. So again, ChatGPT is helping us build our date function. So there's three things we need to do to turn on time intelligence. The first thing we need to do is to create a date table. And we're gonna do that with the code we see right here. So we'll copy that code 
and we'll bring it over to Power BI. So I'm gonna take my code, I'm gonna go up to modeling, I'm gonna hit new table, and ChatGPT is so good at this, I can just paste the code straight in. So there is our code. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit check. This is now saved in. So here is our brand new date table. It's given us the date, the year, the month number, the month name, and the year month. But we can't just have a table called date. We need to mark it as a date table. How do you do that? Really easy. You right click on it, we right click on date, we come down to mark as date table. This little window is going to come up explaining what this means. So this enables the creation of date related visuals, tables, and quick measures. Quick measures are really cool once you get this set up. Keep in mind that any existing date tables will be removed and visuals or DAX referring to it will break. So we'll go ahead and mark this as a date table. And then we just need to designate our date column, which is date. So that was the second step. And then the third step is to create the relationship. Can't forget that step. I've definitely forgotten that step one too many times. So let's come over here. Here's our new date. So let's pull our date down here. Let's figure out where our GL data is. There it is. So we'll just drag and drop date down to date. You wanna make sure that this is a one to many relationship with cross filter direction signal and make this relationship active. So now we are fully set up. We've got a functioning date table. All right, now next we're gonna create the two slicer tables that will let our users select between these different dynamic functions. So our first one is gonna be for metric. We can go ahead and copy that in. We're gonna create the table the same way that we did before. So I'm gonna to go to modeling. I'm gonna to go to new table. I'm gonna paste this in. So here we go, metric, and it's creating a table that is just actual budget and prior year that we can feed into a slicer. We'll check that. Okay, and then we're gonna do one more table and this is gonna be our period table. All right, let's come down to our period slicer table. We got our week to date, month to date, quarter to date, year to date. We'll copy this code over. We're gonna come back to Power BI. Week to date, month to date, quarter to date, year to date. Go ahead and check that. And now this step is done. So we've got our slicer tables. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post brand new videos every single week and I don't want you to miss a thing. So we've got our table set for the slicer. While we're here, let's just go ahead and add those slicers so they're ready for us. All right, so we'll put our store, so we'll put our first slicer here, copying it, just use the formatting. I'm gonna come down to metric, we'll select metric. Now you do wanna make sure these are single select so it doesn't get tripped up. So we'll go ahead and mark single select. So there's our metric. And then we'll go ahead and make this one our period. Beautiful. So there's our month to date, quarter to date, weeks to date, year to date. And there's our actual budget and prior year. So that's all set. All right, now the last thing we need to do is to build the one dynamic measure to replace all 12. So let's go ahead and copy the magic code right here. So now this code is gonna do everything for us. It's gonna dynamically pull in what's in metric and period. It's gonna calculate all the information we need out of our main table. This is gonna be kind of the one and done. So we'll hit new measure. We'll paste in all of our code. This is gonna be called the smart value. So we'll check that off. All right, so now we've created that measure and that measure is what we're gonna pull into the matrix. So we'll go ahead and pull this in as our value. There you see is the value. I'm gonna pull in, we'll just pull in our category so we can look at our accounts. We can come back to GL data. We'll pull in category. There you go. Okay, so then we are right now on our actual month to date. So right now we're on actual month to date. Now the way these time functions are gonna work is if I don't designate a date or a period here, it's just gonna go to the newest date it finds. And I'll tell you the newest date it's gonna find is June 30th. So look what we can do here. Right now we're saying we want actual as month to date. So this is gonna be the month of June. Now if I go to quarter, all of a sudden you're gonna see that go up. Now it is gonna be April, May, and June. If I go up to year to date, we're gonna see it now be January through June and you can see the data scaling up appropriately. And then of course, if I go to week to date, we're gonna get a really small number because it's just the current week we're in based on all of these date functions we're creating. Then of course I can go back, let's look at year to date. So these were our actuals. We can flip to budget. We can flip to prior year. And another really cool thing you can do is if you don't even wanna use the slicer or the period like this, you can just drop them into the chart. So let me go ahead and delete metric. And I'm actually just gonna pull metric in. And I'm actually just gonna pull metric in as the column. So now you can see the actual budget and prior year side by side for year to date. Again, we'll flip to quarter to date, we'll flip to month to date, and that is how you make a dynamic measure, one single measure to replace 12 measures with the power of AI. How cool is that? If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out my video on how to teach AI all about your Power BI model. This will let you essentially program AI tools to learn Power BI and write code customized just for you. I'm gonna put the link to that video right up here. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, don't miss my video on training your AI on Power BI models. I'll catch you over there. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.